It's no secret that scientific research is often long, difficult, time-consuming, and just really, really expensive. This is true for pretty much any field, like, you know, engineering or robotics, but it's especially the problem for biotech. Projects in the field can take over 10 years to develop, as well as consuming enormous amounts of cash. Even just basic reagents and disposable lab equipment can rack up thousands of dollars in costs for just a single lab. This is a real problem. Because this research and development is so resource intensive, it becomes too scary for companies to invest in early on. There's just too much risk, so they leave it all up to the universities to do the innovative research. But universities, I love them, but they suck. And that's because of the way that grants work. Up to 50% of a researcher's time is spent just trying to get a grant to fund their lab. Not only that, but the competitive nature of grants means that you have to basically be spitting out publications, like, all the time. If you want to play the game, if you want to keep your lab going, you have to be secretive. You have to push yourself extremely hard, working terrible, terrible hours. And on top of all of that, you have to avoid avenues of research that are too risky. Basically, you have to play it super safe. So no matter what level you look at it, innovative ideas are just too scary for the existing research innovation system. In the end, the vast, vast majority of research stays locked away in the lab, with little of it actually making it into the real world. And this is particularly the case with biotech. And this isn't just sad. It's, in a sense, destructive. Biotech, and particularly synthetic biology, have so much potential for creating sustainable economies and saving the climate. We need these ideas out in the wild, and we need them yesterday. But what if I told you that there was another way? What if we could decentralize funding away from control of grants and from mega corporations, and instead put it in the hands of the people? Does that sound too good to be true? Because it's not. It's called decentralized science, and it's already coming out of the shadows to fund loads of projects at some of the world's top universities. So let's jump into it. Like I said earlier, the sad truth about scientific research, and particularly in the field of biotechnology, is that it's not cheap. And this means it's risky. Too risky for typical investor groups to put money into, as well as actually, you know, like foster it from an early stage. But it wasn't always this way. Before the 1980s, the whole biological research pipeline, mostly in pharmaceutical research, was handled pretty much within a single company, from start to finish, from idea conception to commercialization. But in the 90s, early stage research and development started getting outsourced to reduce risk to the companies. Fast forward to today, and the vast majority of early research is conducted at universities or at research centers. And for that research to actually go into becoming, you know, business and commercialized requires that it gets spun off into a startup. And then usually it gets bought up by the big biotech companies. And now because of all this outsourcing, this framework is now pretty much responsible for the entirety of bioscience innovation. This is, well, it's good and bad. It's good because science is now done in the universities instead of in the walled gardens of corporations, which is fantastic for accessibility. And having scientists employed as professors means that they can pass on their knowledge to the next generation. But the thing is, despite getting to this point, the bottom line is that the risk hasn't actually changed. Real-world applications of bioscience still have enormous cost, years-long development cycles, high failure rates, and huge uncertainty when it comes to the pricing of whatever's actually going to get made in the end. And again, this was already a problem when all the research was done in-house. But at least in the 80s, companies would commit to the whole research pipeline. But now that that research has been outsourced, there's a new problem. Research in universities needs to be funded by grants, and there's only so many of those, and they're extremely slow to get. On the other side of university grants are venture capitalist groups, waiting to kind of basically throw money at good ideas. But their definition of a good idea tends to be one that's already been proven to scale. Anything less is, well, it's a gamble. What if it can't scale? What if lab-grown meat or lab-grown denim fibers only work in test tubes, and when you try to grow them in bioreactors at scale, they die, or they taste different, or they feel different with the denim, not taste different, that'd be weird. <laughs> Why are you tasting denim? Coupled with a years-long time scale, this way that research has evolved, well, it comes to a really bizarre paradox. Companies are outsourcing all of their R&D to avoid risk, 
But because researchers need to get grants, they are also avoiding the risk. Meaning, in order to try and mitigate risk, the entire entrepreneurial sector of biotech has just completely shot itself in the foot. There's almost no funding system that can cover the gap from academia to commercialization. And the real world impact of this is that there's less compounds being developed, fewer treatments being made, and the whole field of synthetic biology, which has been a promising upcoming field for 20 years, has remained almost completely in its infancy. You may not have even heard of synthetic biology before. So at the beginning, I mentioned decentralized science. But what actually is it? What is the tangible real-world impact of DSI? Well, first, let me define it. So according to Nature, the decentralized science movement, I, you know, DSI, hopes to become an alternative funding and knowledge sharing model for scientists. It's about promoting open science as a way to gain trust and eliminate sources of bias. They also mentioned how this began in 2021 with several biotech-focused decentralized autonomous organizations, or DAOs, that use blockchain technology to orchestrate their activities. Basically, DAOs, like us at ValleyDAO, are a form of organization that use blockchain and these things called smart contracts to enable transparent and the sort of like decentralized form of decision making. We hold community-wide votes on all of the major things that we do. Basically, we're kind of like the opposite of the existing research innovation system. Now, just a little bit of extra history. Before 2021, so before DSI, DAOs were primarily used in the decentralized finance sector, as in DeFi. But we're trying to solve the issues caused by money and risk, so why would a model taken straight out of the finance sector actually be good here? Well, weirdly, it's because of the fact that DAOs are kind of like the polar opposite of the typical funding establishment. It actually makes them a really great alternative to grants and venture capitalist funding. Let me explain a little bit more about that. So, in a typical company, like a biotech company, you have a board of shareholders and you have the employees. The board of shareholders appoint CEOs who then appoint managers, who then appoint the other employees, and so on and so forth, to carry out the company's mission. The thing is here, this level of separation from the shareholders to the rest of the employees means that the shareholders are actually completely separate from the ground level of the company. There's a gap between the shareholders and their agendas compared to what's going on with the rest of the organization. Basically, the employees control what goes on day to day, but they don't own the company. And the external shareholders, well, they own the company, but they've got limited understanding of the day to day. This gap means that the kind of driving forces, like their incentives, misalign, and sometimes members of these groups, <coughs> usually one of these groups more than the other, ends up prioritizing their own gain at the organization's expense. In theory, and largely in practice, this is thought of completely differently in DAOs, as everyone is incentivized to do good and grow the organization. Because as contribution, you're awarded governance tokens. And the more work you do, and the more material that you contribute, the more of these tokens you accrue. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by you own some token? What is that? Well. Because we're a blockchain org, that means that everything we do is on the blockchain. And this takes the form of a token, the GROW token to be precise. If you own GROW and you have a say in what we do, how we do things, how we do governance, because of this, we can start to shift focus away from short-term gains and preventing misalignment. These aligned incentives mean it's much easier for us at ValleyDAO to fund longer term projects, projects with higher risks, but higher innovation, much higher than the typical funding establishment. This also means entrance for new members is way easier as public like permissionless blockchains make it super easy for anyone to join and start contributing. DAOs therefore enable the contribution of everyone. And by everything living on the blockchain, it keeps everything way more transparent. 
so long as you know how to use the blockchain, but it's out there. Not only this, but the way that DAOs work means that our community can read project details, give feedback, and start a discussion about projects that we're looking to invest in. And then this doesn't even stop once we've invested. Even once the deal is completed and money changes hands, because we all have a stake in the project doing well, we're all able to provide assistance through continued feedback, you know, ideas and extra contribution on the, the commercialization pathway, for instance, for monetizing the project. And because of how DAOs work, all the profits all go back into the treasury of ValleyDAO, which in turn goes to funding more researchers, which in turn means that we can fund future projects and make this sustainable loop for ValleyDAO to fund even more projects. Whew. Now, I spent a lot of this video ragging on big companies, grants, and venture capitalists, but in reality, DAOs don't actually replace any of these. Instead, they complement and kind of supercharge the whole field by plugging in those massive gaps in the industry, by building a platform where everyone can collaborate to the really long and complex biotech development process, from those big companies, to the artists, to the researchers, to anyone. It's no wonder, then, that given all of this, decentralized science is starting to generate huge amounts of traction, even outside of the research space. If you like this video, leave a comment down below so that we know to make more like them. Thank you, and have a nice day.